What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Daily Refinement. My name is Chris. I make a full-time living selling stuff online, and I'm just taking a quick break from shipping to give you guys an idea or a thought on something that can help you really take your reselling game to the next level. So I am about to release a reseller's field guide. I'm gonna release it next month. It's gonna be free. It's gonna give you all the math and all the departments you need to build your reselling business. Now, that being said, 90% of you or more are still going to fail. And this is my thought, why? And um, if I'm wrong, I think I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong in this case because I think the same 90% of people who will not make this work are the same 90% of people who don't like their job. That sounds kind of funny, but this is just a thought that I had when thinking about where I live and where I have lived in the past and the difference in mindset. I moved from New York City to the Bay Area. Um, over the last 10 years, I've lived in two very expensive, very highly concentrated income areas. Uh, where I live, I don't meet that many people who dislike their job. In fact, I meet people who love their job. And the average income is like 150K. Now, here's the thing. They are usually in the top 10% of their field. They're very highly desired. It's very hard to keep them at your company because there are so many people courting them. They have to do things like free lunch, free housing, free everything to get these people to just stay working at that company. And that's why I always find it confusing when people are saying, oh, I hate my job, I hate this, I hate, I hate my boss, etc." If you are really, really valuable, everyone at the company kisses your ass. And I've seen this over and over and over again. When I worked for Lexus of Fremont, I was the second top salesperson and every single thing that I did was free. The company would pick up all kinds of stuff. You get a free uh, car demo, you get a free lunch, you get to go to all the sports games for free. Your job is just to network with people and convince them to buy things. Everything is free. Everyone at the company worships you when you bring in the money. When you are the bell ringer and you take care of everyone in the store, everyone takes care of you. That's what happens to top salespeople, they make their own schedule. And I see the same thing with top engineers, with top managers. They do whatever they want, whenever they want, with whoever they want. Isn't that the point of being an entrepreneur to have that same thing? It's the same thing, except for you have chosen reselling as your career. If you don't have a desire to be in the top 10% of reselling, you probably won't make it because it's very hard. And 90% or more of reselling is a job. Okay, the only things that are not, in my opinion, are buying, describing, and product research. These three things, you can finesse, you can use some art, you can use some a long, you know, years of experience of buying antiques, for example, and you know the right keywords or the right uh, era to put it in for the title and people will buy it and they, they trust your expertise. But again, that is totally different. That person, can get a really high paying job at an art gallery, or they're, they're probably not going to hate their job as a curator of something at a museum. They're probably gonna be highly paid, highly compensated, and it's the same people who are successful at eBay. In fact, when I look at reselling, the people who do the best, and I always get flack for this, are the people who have a full-time job. The reselling part of this is only the buying, research, and describing. If you have a very high standard and you don't let employees enter in garbage like you enter it in exactly how i want you to enter it in and if you mess up it's my fault that is always the attitude of people who are high performers if they screw up it's their fault not their employees fault not their contractors fault not the product's fault if they if they see that they think that um uh fidget spinners are going to be a high seller and they screw up they don't blame the fidget spinner people they don't blame influencers they just move on move on to the next thing and look for something else that's going to work so I just think it's really telling that the people who don't like their job are maybe the same people who are just interested in reselling and they want to hop into it to see how it goes. There's a big difference between someone who's interested and someone like myself who's committed to making this work. I will make this work no matter what. You will easily get distracted. If anything pops up that's more interesting or easier, you will switch. If Amazon's easier, you'll switch to Amazon. If Etsy's easier, you'll switch to Etsy. If Amazon Merch is easier, you'll switch to Amazon Merch because you are looking for easy. You are not looking to become the best in any of these platforms. I personally know people who net six figures in all of these platforms. And usually, with very, very few exceptions, they are in a maximum of two platforms, usually. 
Okay, now the, the only exception to that rule will be people who have software and list on multiple platforms or people who sell brand new items on multiple platforms. And that to me is still the same game. They're, they're, they're mastering the same product. They're just using a different marketing channel. They already know the market on um, barbecues. So they find the best barbecue at the best price. They're the only one offering the barbecue and the brush and um, the coals and the amazing apron combo. And the combo is $499 and they're the only one selling it. And it's featured by a famous person. They have figured out all those little things to make their product unique. And guess what? They're probably the same people who earn over six figures at a regular job. And I just find it hard to believe that it's a coincidence that these people who have a regular job and enjoy their job also kill it in reselling. They just excel in all areas of your life. Everything is related to everything. How you do one area in your life is probably how you do another area in your life. If you are the person always looking for discounts or always subscribing to something and then canceling on the 29th day so you don't have to pay, your customers are gonna treat you the exact same way. You're gonna have a high return rate. You're gonna have people who are unsatisfied. You're gonna probably sell products that are in that kind of category, looking for ways to, to sneak through the system and just over broke is what a job is and most resellers are in that category so i really do not want you guys to fail i want you guys to commit but just understand that only a certain few percentage only the top people as a, according to pareto's rule make all the money so which part do you want to be in do you want to commit to being in the top 10 20 percent of your market or do you want to be interested in being in the bottom 80% where anything can derail you because you're just not that serious? So hopefully this is not too negative, guys. I really do think you can make it as a reseller, but you need that dedication and the fire in your belly to become the best in your field. Because there's people like a thousand times more motivated than me working 24-7 to destroy you. So <laughs> if you want to enter the Shark Tank, as a baby shark, totally cool. But that's why I just want you to have that mindset. There are people that I meet all the time that just started that I know are gonna make it because they just are relentless. They are relentless. So hopefully that's not uh, too negative. If you guys enjoy this type of content, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys on the next episode.